goal of this work that uh, is uh, still somewhat work in progress, but it's working and is being used, is to create a dynamic model with foresight with an important qualification that we want to minimize the modifications of the standard model. Uh, why is this important? Um, it is important that because the first effort to make the dynamic GTAP model, I believe that was Terry Walmsey. Um, she tried to create that and it took amazing amount of work. It was just the recursive dynamic model. And it also created a little bit of hesitation among researchers because they would have to learn a fairly different model um, to run. Um, and, and there's a lot of uh, value in sticking to the standard model and only documenting modifications of that model. So, so people are very conservative, um, especially in the GTAP community, uh, because it took uh, some time to establish the validity of the standard GTAP model. So just throwing it away is not a good thing because there's still a lot of skeptics and the people who consider GTAP a black box and 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 coming up with a new model just means that you have to go again through the whole explanation of what your model do. So this is the whole idea. Let's keep as much as we can of the standard GTAP model, and let's see how much we can push it into giving us dynamic uh, behavior. And so, so a little bit more on that importance of including foresight is that, as I said, it is very obvious that market players do possess some degree of foresight. Uh, and why is that? Well, mainly because shocks to the economy are often known in, in advance. Most of the policies that we look at as modelers are negotiated for years and implemented at some future date. Uh, and even some other uh, changes to the world economy, such as the climate changes, these are also fairly well predicted. I'm, I'm not saying that we know exactly what the climate change is going to mean for the world, but we have a good idea that around 2050, the concentration of the CO2 is going to reach a very critical level that will lead to uh, severe weather disruptions and declines in yield. So we, we essentially know that we don't know exactly how much it will be, but we know that there will be a negative shock after 2050 or about. And market players have the tools to predict these impacts. Uh, first of all, they might have also the GTAP model or they have another model. So I think it's important to understand that yes, market players are able to foresee to some degree what's about to happen. And so what that means is that the foresight means that the behavior will be changed even before the policy is implemented. So as I said in my earlier example, if you're going to increase a tariff, importers might just uh, uh, import more, put it in you know the stocks or uh, inventory and, and sell it later because it just makes sense to respond to the uh, policy before the policy takes place. And as I keep saying, this modeling is not very easy, as you will see in just a moment. And for that reason, it is not included in the, in the dynamic GTAP, GTAP RD, which is recursive dynamic, um, which is strictly uh, determining its expectations based on the historical trends, which means that the past is driving the future rather than the actual future. Uh, well, of course, you know, this may work for some, some cases, like when the future is not changing too much, then pro probably the recursive dynamic model will give a good picture of the world. But again, it will not be able to deal with foreseen policy changes because of uh, the recursive dynamic only learns about the change once it has happened. And that makes it much less useful, of course, to um, describe the dynamics of the policy change. Now let's talk about what is needed if we want to turn a static CG model, such as the standard GTAP model that we have been working with uh, yesterday and today to a dynamic model with foresight. Well, we first need to be able to identify the linkages between periods. Uh, what is it, how do these two periods uh, connect? What is that um, 
which market is impacted by the future. And there are actually two which um, I have implemented already, um, and maybe there are others. Um, but the first one is, of course, the capital allocation. We, we, I think that it makes sense that capital flows where the return is the highest. So, so the expectations of the returns for capital would be driving the investments. And that's one of the linkages between the periods, which means that the capital will be invested today based on the future return. Another one, which I think is very useful, and I think it's actually very well received, is the inclusion of stocks in the GTAP model. Um, um, because the GTAP model is, not, is comparative static, it doesn't really have stocks, but you actually can include stocks in the dynamic, uh, forward-looking dynamic model. Um, because here, the decision to whether I want to build my stocks or dissolve my stocks depends on what will happen next year. If next year prices are going to go up, I want to actually build my stocks because I can sell next year uh, with a profit. But then if I know that the prices will go down next year, then I want to sell now. I don't want to wait until the price goes down. So, so this is another important behavior that if you want to deal with stocks, you need to have the foresight. Otherwise, the uh, whole behavior makes no sense. You cannot invest stocks or decide on your stocks based on what happened. It doesn't make any, any sense. Uh, it matters what will happen next year. Um, okay, and now what, what needs to happen is when you think about our model as it is, we need to make these expected variables exogenous and supplied by the next period simulation. And this is an important point. Uh, now that we are moving into the dynamic uh, framework, we actually have a solution for each period. And, and so what this is saying is that uh, now the future price will not be calculated in my current model, but it'll be coming from the future model. So there will be a model for the next year, and that will supply me with uh, my model with the actual future prices. And so what is needed to, to, to what, what is needed to make this model work in this dynamic context is we need to solve a combined system. So it will be a multiple system of multiple years with these additional constraints, which makes actually the system work, which means that the future values might be must be consistent with the expectations. And that's the hard part because you have to solve this model for several years. And in each year, you have to make sure that what actually happens is what people expected was going to 